option uh, and we require and I believe that we have been given a, a very strong commitment that the protections contained in what's called the backstop uh, will, be, will be held constant. So we welcome that. Of course, we will work on to ensure that that uh, commitment is honoured and we believe it is very, very important that our own government in Dublin holds firm on this issue that Leo Varadkar doesn't panic uh, in, as the brinkmanship uh, grows and as, as the clock ticks, uh, that people uh, keep a firm hand and a, a steady hand to ensure that Irish interests are protected. There will be no veto afforded to any party by anybody um, that would allow to, to allow the frustration or the undermining of the basic protections that have been secured for the island of Ireland. So I think the best thing we could do is rather than me speaking at length, that we will take questions. Uh, if you just identify yourselves, we will answer them um, as best we can. Please. Catherine Fior, EU reporter. Karen uh, uh, Bradley, Secretary of State of Northern Ireland, has allegedly said, uh, um, has been reported as saying that in the event of a uh, New Deal Brexit, uh, the, the, the probably the government would feel forced to hold, hold a border poll. Is this something that Sinn Féin would support? This is something that we have addressed consistently with the British government. As you know, we're an Irish Republican Party. Uh, we stand for the reunification of the island. <coughs> the issue of the border has come very sharply into the political mainstream because of Brexit, because um, the border in Ireland creates uh, a real jeopardy for the island of Ireland, but also now for, for the European Union as a whole. Uh, we wish to see a border code in any event. Uh, provision is made for that within the Good Friday Agreement. Ireland is changing demographically and politically, and we, we believe that we are on the road to such a, a referendum, and we believe to the reunification of our country. We, we've told Mrs May very specifically, um, as we have told the government in Dublin, that in the event of a crash, and this could happen as much by accident as by design, then it would be imperative that the question of the border the question of reunification would be put to the Irish people. It would be uh, an impossible ask for Ireland uh, in the event that Britain crashed out of the European Union to expect Ireland simply to muddle along yeah. and to accept all of the damage that a crash Brexit would incur. So yes, uh, we heard those reports in respect of Karen Bradley. Uh, she is correct to say that in the event of a hard Brexit or a crash Brexit, of course the issue uh, of the Irish border, the issue of unification, would have to be put to the people as envisaged in the Good Friday Agreement. This is a point that we've also made to the government in, in Dublin. Just to finish out, and just to be clear, in any event, we believe that we are in a process now, over time, uh, in uh, achieving a referendum on unity and of course it's our objective not only to secure that referendum but to win it and to win it well. Hi Luke Jones from uh, Yahoo. Um, just a, a question on the backstop. Um, Theresa May is uh, going to be speaking to Jean-Claude Juncker again this week um, about the assurances and clarifications that she's seeking on the backstop. Um, so I just wondered whether you discussed those um, with Mr Barnier today and whether you received any information about what you or what the EU might be willing to give and, and whether those or whether those um, uh, assurances will be um, acceptable to you. I think it's uh, common knowledge that Mrs May is seeking such assurances or clarification. What is not clear as of yet is what is the nature of the assurances that she seeks. So I think in the first instance, it's for the British government and Mrs May to make that clear. Um, we have been assured that whatever words of comfort, whatever words of clarification are given uh, to assist the political process, that there will be no question 
of undermining or compromising the legal text, the legal protections, the legal protocol that uh, contains the protections for Ireland. And that is our concern. Our concern from start to finish has always been in a constructive and a responsible way to protect Irish uh, interests. And we are astounded at the fact that the DUP persists with such a reckless disregard for the interests of, of everybody who lives on the island of Ireland. And it seems to us that Mrs May, uh, with the document published today, once again attempts to placate the DUP. Uh, her efforts have failed um, because they are not reasoned or reasonable on these points. And, and they have acted against the express wishes of the majority of the people in, in the north of Ireland. We have no detail on the precise nature of any clarification or words of comfort or, or how they might be expressed. What we have absolute clarity on is that whatever they may be, they will not, under any circumstance, represent a reopening of a negotiation. That's done. Nor will they in any way undermine or compromise uh, the legal protections uh, achieved for Ireland and necessary to protect basic Irish interests. Sorry, go ahead. Um, Ruth Olida, Schumann Trainee. Um, you mentioned earlier that your advice to Leo Varadkar would be not to panic. How do you feel the Irish government has represented Ireland throughout this process? And do you have any more advice of what they could do to make sure that we're no longer undermined? Yeah, I mean, we, we've been um, fairly consistent and we have worked with the Irish government where appropriate. We've been very pragmatic in terms of presenting a united front to the EU, to the other member states, to see that this is bad for the whole island of Ireland. Um, so we've worked with the government, we've worked with Leo Varadkar, the Taoiseach and the Tanister. But I think that as we get to this crucial point, and particularly as we run into this vote in Westminster next week, and I don't think, I think it's anybody's guess what will happen after that. Um, but I think as we get to this crucial end stage, it's so, so important that the, the Taoiseach and the Irish government continues to show leadership, that they don't blink, that they hold firm to their commitment to need to protect the Good Friday Agreement in all of its parts, that they hold firm to the commitment that there can be no weakening of the backstop, because that's the only guarantee that we have here. What's on the table currently, in the form of the withdrawal agreement, really is the least worst option. It's far from ideal. It's far from perfect. It leaves us void in so many ways. And I think that uh, as we navigate our way through this next uh, number of weeks, months and probably years, as the fallout of Brexit will continue, um, it's so important that Irish interests are protected. And the British government certainly have discarded, discounted, uh, made irrelevant the issues, the concerns, the feeling, the mandate of the people of the North. Because the majority of people elected in the North are anti-Brexit. The majority of people in the Assembly elected the other four progressive parties who have all come together on different forms over the course of the last uh, year and a half. That's been very significant because it shows a different style of politics which is necessary in the North. But the DUP in all of this debate do not speak for the majority of people in the North and we just need, um, in the course of the next short period, we need the Taoiseach not to blink, to remain firm, to remain strong on the issue that there can be no diminution of the backstop as agreed. Have we any other? Have we dazzled you with our brilliance? <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Uh, thank you for taking my question. My name is Jason Phelan. I'm also a Schumann trainee here at the Parliament. Hello, Jason. Um, I was just wondering if you had any comment to make uh, regarding the recent merger announced between the SDLP and Fianna Fáil. Indeed. Well, this is something that uh, I thought Brexit was a long-running saga <laughs> until I reflected on this. Um, this uh, mating ritual between the SDLP and Fianna Fáil. And then I realised actually Brexit was relatively short by comparison. <laughs> this is something that has been, has been mooted for some time. Let me say this. We believe that every political party ought to organise nationally. We're a national organisation. The other parties, with all due respect to them, are regional entities. Politics now uh, increasingly is 32 county in its nature. I mean, we're a small island. I mean, 
often we have notions of scale, delusions of, you know, scale. We're a small island with a small population base. It's in all of our interests on every level, economically, uh, to work in, in a cohesive and all-island way. And the business community, by the way, North and South, have known that for, for a decade and more, and they're very much ahead of the curve. It's also true to say, uh, in recent times, that the kind of impulse for social change and we could see this in the, north, in the south with um, issues like marriage equality, issues that arose around uh, the Eighth uh, Amendment and so on, um, that there's that impulse for modernisation and change. And don't imagine that those debates happened just in the 26 counties. Those were very much island-wide and captured something. I, I think it's a, a generational turning of the wheel. Mm -hmm. It's a turning of the political wheel. And so... When Brexit then presents itself as, as a dilemma that presents a real and imminent threat to national, Irish national interests, 32 county wide, I think it forces parties uh, who might not otherwise be inclined to look over the border and to look to what is genuinely uh, the national question. So what Fianna Fáil or the SDLP do themselves or with each other is of course a matter for themselves but I, I, I personally we think it's, it's a good thing that politics is, is, is national. We also uh, as a second response to, to the first question uh, to Catherine um, we believe that we are now in the end game of partition I, I just think the demographics that social progress politics that I refer to and now Brexit are all kind of converging to, to make that the case. And, uh, I mean, as you know, we will readily make the argument for Irish unity because on, on every level it makes sense. And we have, we have unfinished business. We've unfinished democratic business and we've unfinished business of reconciliation and understanding and accommodating each other and actually liking each other and... Mm -hmm. And, and forging a new sense and a positive sense of what it is to be Irish. It's all very exciting things. So <clears throat> I don't know that um, anything quick will happen with uh, Micheál Martin and um, Colm Eastwood. I know there's been some dissent within the SDLP, some discomfort with these matters. We're observers of that. We're not influential in it. But as, as, a, as a rule... Uh, we think actually every party, Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil, ought to be contesting elections in the North. Why not? Mm -hmm. They have plenty to say about the North. They often tell us that they, in fact, are the experts on the North, even though we, in fact, are the people, amongst others, mm -hmm. uh, that are, enjoy a mandate and who, who actually you know, represent uh, people there. So overall, I think that's, that's a good thing to happen. Um, I cannot say that I wish them well in their endeavours, but I can say that we'll see them out on the stump. Understood. Okay, folks, thank you very much. And that's it. And welcome to the very much. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Good luck with it all. Yes.